Hello everybody and welcome back to the stream. It's Saturday and you know what that means. It's time for weekend kickoff where we get our Saturday started right with some some good old strength and stamina focused body weight class. Um, I hope everybody's having a good morning so far. It is, it appears to actually be raining still, which if, uh, if you were on the stream last night, you know that it was raining a little bit last night as well. So this is just delightful. Like, keep those rain vibes coming towards Colorado and California as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully that will help to wet things down a little bit. Uh, but it is very nice to have a little bit of water. Hey, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I'm I'm having a bit of a quiet morning. Um, you know, just... Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't even know how to describe it. It's a, it's a quiet morning. It's... It's a morning where I'm feeling a little overwhelmed by everything that I'm trying to do right now on top of everything that's happening in the world right now. Um, definitely, definitely just gobsmacked and absolutely saddened by uh, Chadwick Boseman passing away yesterday. Just. The fact that that man made 10 movies in the last year, including multiple Marvel movies, which require a pretty solid degree of physical stamina, while dealing with stage 3 and stage 4 cancer is just, I mean, it's remarkable. He was a remarkable human being, and... It's, it's just a tragedy that we've lost him. And, you know, I don't want to get in the way of, uh, of the black community being able to mourn him properly. So I'll just say that it is, it is a hard year to lose anybody. It is a particularly hard year to lose a hero, um, of the black community here in America. And... Uh, all of my thoughts and all of my love are going out to his family and to his friends and to um, every fan. Um, this is hard. It's a hard thing to deal with. It feels like the universe just continuing to kick this year when it's already down. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a quiet morning. It's it's a morning where I'm feeling a little bit more of the weight of the world, but I'm here and that's great. And you're here and that's great. And you know, we're going to work out. We're going to honor where we are today, whether that's a really awesome pumped up place or a place where you're feeling a little more tired, a little sadder. We're going to honor that. We're going to get on our mat. And we're going to do class. Shush, stomach. <laughs> we're going to do class. And whatever that entails is going to be awesome. Okay? Always, always remember. And I think sometimes I'm better reminding you of this when I am also feeling not, you know, 100%. Uh, strength and excitement, but, you know, in terms of our success criteria for class, if you get on the map and you're like, all right, yeah, I've got a lot of energy. I want to get out. I want to, you know, work on my goals. I want to challenge myself. That is awesome. And if you get on the mat and you're like, if I can just make it through class, that's going to be a miracle, then that's awesome too. So honor where you are this morning and, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's just, let's just have a good class. Let's have a good class, my friends. And then go off into whatever we're doing for the rest of the weekend. 
Uh, fingers crossed for continued rain because rain is always a good thing. All right, let's go to our pre-class checklist. So we've got our water. Yes, still in a pint glass. Um, I promise that by the first stream next week, I will have washed my water bottle. So if you have a water bottle, probably a better idea. Um, but, uh, you know, we're in our homes. So if all you have is a pint glass, put your water in a pint glass. Just make sure you're hydrating. We got our comfy clothes on. We've got our mats set up or a mat sized area. Um, and if you are using fitness wearable, let's turn them on right now and we can use the high intensity interval training setting for this. So get that going. Today is going to be all about that marathon mindset, not that sprint mindset. Okay. So today is going to be all about long work intervals and, uh, and just managing our energy. Hello, Amanda. Oh, so good to see you. So good to see you. It's, it's a morning. All right, let's do some exercise. So we've got everything going onto our mats for our usual warm up. I'm going to be so delicate with these glasses for probably the next year. And it's very disconcerting because when you've had glasses for a while, you start to just treat them like crap. Uh, so my last ones, I mean, and it was kind of obvious by the fact that they were literally being held together by glue at the end. But like, you know, I would sit on them and sort of throw them down on my bed and then be like, where'd they go? Oh, I'm sort of crushing them over here. And like, it, it's been a while since I've felt so fiercely protective of my glasses. I'm like, no, I have to take them off with both hands because if I take them off with one hand, they're going to stretch weirdly on one side and then the frame's going to get all wonky. And <sighs> it's a morning. It's a morning. Let's exercise. All right. I've got the speaker going, so let's do our warm up. <sighs> so everybody on your mats, on your backs, one foot crossed over the opposite knee. And we're going to start with our hip rocks and bridges. Good God, that thing is locked. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, and let us really make sure that we are paying attention to the fact that this is a warm up, not a let's jump immediately to 100% effort. So let's talk a little bit about form through the warm up because I feel like I haven't done a ton of that in the classes this week. So for our hip rocks and bridges, not too many form notes. We're not trying to go for, you know, the highest hip rock we can do. Make sure you are engaging your core to get your hips up into the air. That is the important part of that movement. But, you know, my hips aren't coming that high off the ground. So that is totally fine. When you come down to do the bridge, make sure that you are taking the standing foot up to the ball of that foot before you press up, okay? So now we're gonna switch feet and do this on the other side. Same notes. And one thing you can really enjoy with this particular warm up exercise is as we do the hip rock and we're lifting the standing leg up and sort of pulling this whole hip apparatus closer to our bodies, we're getting a really nice hip stretch. Um, and that can feel really good, particularly uh, during our uh, during our warm up sequence. So try and pay attention to where you're feeling those nice stretchy bits throughout this whole thing. And, uh, you know, as always paying attention to the different signals that our body is sending us, the, the hip stretch should feel like a positive experience. You know, there is a very specific quality to quote unquote pain that is from, you know, a really good stretch or, oh, my muscles are sore because I did a really good workout. So, Make sure that you're able to identify that. All right, we're rolling onto our sides. We're doing our leg series now. So three exercises on this side before we move to the other side. Starting with our Jane Fonda. And we're here going for a perfectly straight line of the body, okay? So if you struggle to figure out whether you're actually doing that, and obviously it's harder when I'm not in the room to be like, 
oh, you need to adjust this thing or this thing. Um, your, the edge of your mat is, or hopefully is, a straight line. So you can just line your body up right along that and go, okay, I am in a straight line. Now let me do the exercise. This is what it is supposed to feel like when I'm in the correct position. And then as you get that more hammered into your head, you can do it not having to use the edge of the mat. All right, now we're coming here, top foot flat on the floor in front of the bottom knee. And we're now lifting the bottom leg. We want the, uh, this, the non-working leg, we want that knee pointing straight up towards the ceiling. So we, in all things basically, never want the knee sort of caving in forward towards the midline. Um, depending on the natural flexibility of your hips on that side, this will be easier or harder. So this is my more flexible hip. So I can just sort of set my leg in this position. I don't really have to engage much of the musculature down there to keep this position because the hip's already flexible enough to just maintain it. You'll see on the other side, I do have to engage more musculature in order to keep this position. So just things to think about. All right, top foot now behind the bottom knee, still lifting that bottom leg. This is our most relaxed position in this series um, because we've got this foot flat on the floor and it's not you know crossed in a weird direction. You're not really having to do a ton to keep the leg in this position. So it just gets to be a complete stabilizing force. And we're just sort of chilling here, you know, like we're lying on a beach. Um, so as you're lifting this leg, obviously the majority of the work is coming from the inner thigh, but you should feel a little bit of engagement in your lower uh, abs as well. So just take a second, since we're not really fussing with any other areas of this exercise, just feel that sensation. Just try and pay attention to what muscle groups are engaging as I do this exercise and start to learn how all these muscle groups connect as we're doing this stuff. All right, now we switch over to our other side and we do the same three exercises again. Starting with Jane. Woo! So if you're going, why does this feel a little bit harder on this side than it did on the other side? Well, that's because this leg that is now the top leg was the bottom leg just a second ago, and it had to do uh, two things in a row and then come over here and do a third thing in a row. So it's getting a little bit of extra fatigue going just because it's not getting the, uh, the rest that our other leg is getting. You know, it was our other leg was the top leg, but then it just got to sort of chill and it's not going to have to move again until the horn goes off again just now. So don't worry. It's not that this leg is weaker. Um, it is more likely just that this leg's been doing a little extra work. All right. So top foot flat on the floor in front of that bottom knee, lifting that bottom leg. So you'll see I have to put a little bit more more work into keeping my knee from trying to cave down, which is what it is trying to do naturally. If you're not perfect on this today, please don't worry, okay? This is the aspirational position, but since this isn't like a squat, uh, you know, we're not actually putting any, any pressure, any weight on our knee right now. This is about the safest way for you to start thinking about how do I engage the musculature of my hips to make sure that my knee is always in that nice safe position that I want it to be in, okay? So if you're here today, that's okay. That's okay, just know what you're aiming for and keep thinking about how you're gonna get there. All right, last leg exercise before we move into our uh, section warming up our backs and our hips. So just lifting that bottom leg still nice and relaxed, not really having to worry about stability. We're not going to be rolling anywhere because we've got this foot flat on the floor. 
just keeping us right here in this position. So just sort of chill, you know, look out a window. I've got this beautiful tree right outside my window, which I'm so grateful for because it does provide a little bit of extra privacy from, uh, from the street. So that is really a really nice thing about this apartment. Um, and just, you know, just relax. All right, but no more relaxing. <laughs> That's not true. We're not really going super intensely yet. All right. Oh man, here we are. We are doing our scorpion twist. So let's make sure that our forearms are planted on the ground, okay? You are not lifting your forearms, your elbows off of the ground for any reason during this exercise, okay? So the goal is to swing your leg behind you, get that foot flat on the floor, get that knee pointing up towards the ceiling. But if you can't get to this position without your elbow coming all the way up, then you can't twist quite that far, okay? So this provides a nice gauge of where you currently are in the exercise in terms of your ability to do it and the flexibility of your back and then helps you to better understand as that flexibility improves. All right, we are now standing. Huzzah, huzzah, we will be standing for most of the rest of this. So we're holding our imaginary PVC pipes above our heads and we are doing our nice big torso rotations. So the big thing with this is making sure that the movement is being initiated from the hips, not from the arms. So I see this in class where um, I'll have students who will move the pole that they're holding and then kind of try to follow behind it. And that's not what we're going for, okay? Your arms should stay in the same position relative to your head the whole time. And the only place that I am hinging is at my hips, okay? So always keep that in mind. But now, hey, it's our first opportunity for squats. So I hammer on uh, squat form a lot <laughs> because it's important. So as we're doing these squats, we're still holding that imaginary pipe above our heads. So don't be moving your arms around, letting those elbows drop. The arm should still be say, staying in the same position relative to your head the whole time. And as you squat, your knees should be going straight over your feet at all points during the movement. So you definitely don't want to squat down and have them just immediately cave in like that. But you also, Maybe you can get down like this, but then as you're coming up, they cave in a little bit. That's not good either. So if that's happening, either of those, narrow your stance a little bit and try again. And do that until you've strengthened up enough that you can take the wider stance. All right, down with our imaginary poles, and we're now going into our Samson stretches. So really, stretching out the hips. And we like this because many of us spend a lot of time over the week sitting in front of the computer, not really getting to move our hips around, or standing if you have, uh, you know, um, a job in retail or in various food service, you know. So either way, you are probably not getting to move and stretch your hips out a lot um, and your back as well, which is why we really love this section of the workout because these areas are just crying out for a little bit of engagement. Um, all right, now we're coming down to this nice, low, wide squat position, knees still safely over the feet, it helps that we have our hands on our knees right now, okay? And we're just twisting our shoulders one at a time. First one in towards the midline, then the other. 
Our shoulders are the only things that are moving right now, okay? So I'm not coming up and down out of the squat. I'm not letting my knees follow as I bring the shoulder in. I'm just staying nice and still and strong and stable and only moving these shoulders. So getting a little bit of a twist in the upper back, continuing to really stretch that out, give it a little bit of movement before cardio. <laughs> so we have hit it, my friends. We have hit the final portion of our warm up, and we start here with our cardio section. I'm going to do these on my mat today because my knee has been. For those of you who weren't here yesterday, I uh, I jammed my knee on Wednesday after I'd gone to bed. I you know I got up to go to the bathroom and was walking back to bed and just sort of took a step, except my knee locked up and just sort of went. Um, and it hasn't been hurting particularly, but it's definitely been stiff. And I definitely felt a little after yesterday's class. So I am probably not going to be doing things quite as intensely um, as I normally would, because I'm just keeping an eye on on this. I need to I need to find the uh, knee brace that I own. Speaking of things I'm not going to be doing intensely right now, but I do want to talk about form kick throughs. So as I kick across my standing leg, 90 degree angle, knee pointing up towards the ceiling. We don't want that knee caving in. We don't want to bring our butt all the way down to the ground because if we do either of those things, then when we exert the force to twist us over to the other side and get into the other position, uh, we put some unhealthy torque pressures onto our knees. So make sure that your standing leg when you're doing this on both sides is 90 degrees, knee pointing up, but well away from the floor, okay? Uh, there's a lot of other form components to kick throughs. Honestly, I could spend probably an entire class talking about them. And I think one of the first form videos that will go up on the YouTube channel is going to be four kick throughs just because they are they're a really complex exercise and they have a lot of different components to them um, and and thus a lot of places where things can go wrong so if you're still new to kick throughs um go slow and steady all right you do not have to be going for any sort of speed um, or, you know, really intense power or anything like that. I mean, it, particularly because also it's still the warm up. But um, just make sure that you're giving yourself the time that you need to really learn the exercise. Okay? All right. Woo. Oh, here we are. Here we are, my friends. We've made it through the warm up. Oh, there's an automatic block. No, you cannot see the bottom of my feet. Bye bye. Okay. Ah, uh, hey, friends. Today is a good day to remind everyone that I have a zero tolerance policy for people coming into my chat and being creepy. All right, this is an exercise class. We're here to work out. If you're here to work out, awesome. If you're here to try and fucking awkwardly sexualize me, then you're going straight away out of my chat. All right, so zero tolerance policy. Thanks. All righty, so here we are, my friends. We've made it through the warm up. We've got about 45 minutes of class left and you know let's uh let's see what we can accomplish i think we can accomplish some pretty good stuff so uh we are going to focus today on 
Tabatas, uh, but the 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest structure. All right, so these are, as I said, marathon, not sprint. Usually we use Tabata intervals so that we can really push ourselves for speed and power because it's such an abbreviated amount of time. For, the, uh, for these intervals, which, you know, the combined work and rest take a full minute, we can switch our mindset over a little bit more towards, uh, towards longer term stamina, towards maintaining, being able to maintain the exercise for the entire time. Okay. So it's a little less push really hard and a little more make sure that I can utilize my energy smartly so that I can keep moving the whole time. You still want to push yourself because when you get, a, when you get too far into that mindset, that's when our brain kicks in and is like, ah, yes, what you want me to do is be able to do this exercise with the minimum amount of work. That's not what we're going for. Okay. So you always have to wrestle your brain with that. Um, and it's, it's a weird line. It takes a while. Nobody's perfect at achieving it. There are definitely going to be days, particularly days when you're already not feeling great about, uh, about, you know, life. Those are the days when the brain's really going to kick in and be like, all right, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hold back and chill. And, uh, so don't take this as an opportunity to not push and challenge yourself, but also make sure that you're paying attention to how you distribute your energy so that you're not, you know, using all of it in the first 15 seconds of the timer and then having nothing left for the remaining 30 seconds and just going, you know, lying there in a flop sweat being like, well, crap, guess I can't work out anymore. All right. So don't forget to hydrate kids. So here are our two exercises. For this so yes that's the other thing about this we're going to do two exercises not three and we're just going to alternate between them so we're doing eight repetitions not the usual nine uh the two exercises are going to be side to side planks so we're taking our nice plank position shoulders directly over wrists butts out of the air so i've got that nice flat line i'm going to let my heels just fall to one side come up onto one arm Lift the other arm up towards the ceiling. This shoulder, super engaged, stabilizing this entire process. Hold for a second, let the judges see it. Then back through that front plank to the other side and back and forth, okay? The other exercise is gonna be our slow leg lower. Slow leg lower, no, sorry, not yet. Squat with knee raise. All right, so coming to a standing position, your feet about uh, shoulder width apart, somewhere between hip and shoulder width apart. And we're going to squat down. And as we stand up, we're gonna come up onto one leg and lift the other knee, then back down into the squat and then the other side. So we're just gonna go back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so those are our two exercises, side to side planks and squat with the knee raise. <sighs> so the beauty of this, oh my God, I didn't turn the AC on. No wonder I'm overheating. Um, the beauty of this is that was not the start sound. That was our rest and recuperate sound. And it's a whole 15 seconds. All right, but there, is the knocking that tells us to get ready. And as soon as we hear that fanfare go, we are moving, okay? So starting on time, stopping on time, doing the exercise correctly. Our old friends, I talk about them almost every class because they are the three components of the bare minimum and if you are new to class or haven't been here in a while and are just starting your journey back, then 
That is all I want you to focus on today. Are starting on time, stopping on time, and doing the exercise correctly. All right? And we have oh, such a luxurious amount of rest. It's ridiculous. All right, get ready. Hey, I know my speaker is a little funky with the, uh, with the longer timers in terms of the sound actually coming through. So I'll try to pay attention and make sure that I'm cueing people in, but uh, you're still getting enough of the sound that you should be able to identify when you are supposed to be moving and when you are supposed to be resting and holding back. All right. And yeah, 15 seconds. I mean, it's only a five second difference from our usual timer, but wow, does it feel so much longer? And it's, it's really disconcerting, honestly. Uh, the difference between a 10 and 15 second rest, all right, coming back to those side to side planks, feels much more noticeable to me anyway, than the difference between say a 20 and 30 second work interval or even the difference between a 30 and a 45 second work interval. Um, it's, yeah, it always weirds me out a little bit because I'm so used to the 10 second work interval. Uh, all right, so we're doing these side to side planks. As many of you know, this is a great shoulder strengthening exercise and we do not pay enough attention to strengthening these incredibly important joints. All right, so really slow and steady. We are not ever going for speed on those, okay? We're not ever going for, I gotta move back and forth between the positions super fast. No, you have to be slow and deliberate. Make sure that you're engaging your shoulders correctly because you know what? Strong shoulders, strong shoulders are really important. You know, our shoulder is a ball and socket joint. It's designed to be super flexible and we want it to be super flexible, but there are plenty of times where we need to stabilize it. We need it to be able to hold a position without trying to move around a ton. And when we're not able to do that, that, is when we enter ourselves. And, uh, you know, as somebody who has a recurring shoulder injury, and as somebody who has not one, but two friends who have had to have shoulder surgery this year, um, it's not pleasant, okay? So really make sure that you are focusing on your shoulder. As I move through these positions, I don't want to feel any wobbling. I don't want to feel like I'm about to fall out of the, out of the position. I want to feel like I am able to really hold it, okay? There are so many muscles that come through the shoulder, all right? And we want them to know how to engage how to stabilize. It's one of the reasons why I focus you on trying to do that perpendicular line, shoulder directly over wrist, okay? You wanna create a nice stable base between your shoulder and the floor so that you are not wobbling around, wrenching your shoulder, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay? All right, woo! To your back to your squats with the knee raise. We are well over halfway through, my friends. It doesn't feel as uh, as noticeable on the longer intervals. You know, usually when we're doing like the cardio tabata at the end of class, and it's like, oh yeah, half of the half of the uh, overall timer went by in a flash. Not so much with this one because each work interval works out to a full minute. So no matter 
no matter what, it's going to be eight minutes before we're done, which is twice the length of the, uh, the cardio Tabata structure that I do. Um, but we are now about to go into our final two reps. And I'm moving my mat out of the way a little bit because one of the things that can really impact uh, our ability to do exercises like these side to side planks is our wrist health. And when, uh, when you're working on a surface that is really soft and flexible, uh, you are going to be hyper flexing your hand. And that can have a lot of really negative impacts on your wrist health, okay? Um, and uh, so whenever I'm feeling a little bit twingy in my wrist, I will push the thicker parts of my mat out of the way. So I have these, uh, these puzzle pieces that I use to give myself a little more uh, softness on here, on the surface, which for the most part is really helpful because, you know, this fake wood flooring was not really designed with exercise in mind. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that my downstairs neighbor appreciates when I'm not jumping up and down quite directly on his head. But, uh, but to use these puzzle pieces for plank-based exercises where I'm up on my wrists, uh, it just can uh, have some more negative impact on your wrist health. So if you're using a similar setup and you're feeling some wrist twinging, I definitely recommend pushing some of the thicker elements of your mat out of the way. So I have three mats set up there, basically. I have one yoga mat against the floor, then the puzzle pieces, and then the, uh, I have another yoga mat on top. And so I'll just push the top two layers out of the way, still have a yoga mat against the floor, so I still have a little bit of that support, but not so much that I'm gonna be really hyper flexing my wrist, um, cause that has caused me issues in the past and I'd like to mitigate that. All right. Mm. Oh, yay water, yay air conditioning. I can't believe I forgot to turn that on. Whoops. All right. Mm. So what's next? Two more exercises, another eight minutes of Tabata fun. So our next two exercises are going to be, first one is going to be turtle waves. Y'all know how much I love these turtle based exercises and you know that when I say turtle, it means that the first part of the exercise is going to be rolling up on your shoulders and then rolling up onto your feet. Really, I really do want you to try to be, get up on your feet using that momentum. You know, I roll pretty high up here so that when I roll forward, I get enough of, mom of momentum going that I can just get right up onto my feet. Not possible for everybody. Not everybody has the Achilles flexibility. So if you're really trying and you just keep falling out of it, that's fine. You can use a hand to help push yourself up into that position, okay? So roll up, back into a plank, wave push up, jump the feet forward, and repeat, okay? That is the turtle wave. And now we're gonna do the slow leg lower that I alluded to earlier. So, we're gonna lie flat on our backs, legs stretched up towards the ceiling. And you're going to engage your core so that you add in a little bit of a tilt to your pelvis. This is going to glue your lower back to the ground, okay? So normally, if I'm just laying here because of the natural curvature of my spine, 
my lower back is not, you know, fastened to the ground. It's, it's up a little bit. So adding in that tilt, engaging the core, adding in that tilt, I now cannot get my hands, my fingertips under my lower back. And then we're just going to slowly lower the legs, stopping every 15 degrees to hold for two seconds, then continue and making sure that at no point does that lower back come off the ground. If it does, you need to reset and start again. Okay. So this is the ultimate core exercise. Yes. Love this exercise as you know. <laughs> All right. So we've got turtle waves and we've got the slow leg lower. So as soon as we, well, we'll get the timer going. First sound does not mean go. See, even I'm forgetting. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I do a ton of perpetual motion timers these days. And uh, so I forget that with the Tabatas, we get a little time. We get a little time to relax. All right, knock, knock, knock means get ready, get in position. And we're going. So remember, you still want to jump into that correct plank form. Okay, so just because this is an exercise that is constantly moving does not mean that we want to jump out here and, you know, be awkwardly positioned. So make sure you can jump into this position. Your core is engaged. Your glutes are engaged. And then you do the way of push up and then jump forward. Okay, but we're not using the constant motion as an excuse to lose those bits of form. All right. So make sure that you are able ah, <laughs> that you're able to do both. Oh man. Nice thing about these two exercises is I don't actually have to get myself up off the ground. All right. I hear that knocking and now I get myself into position. All right. So one of the things that I do for this exercise, is I leave my fingertips here on the sides of my lower back so that I can every once in a while just sort of poke them in and see if I'm able to get them under or not. And that just gives me a nice quick check on whether my lower back is still attached to the floor. So one thing you can do if you have this piece of equipment at home, obviously if you don't, your fingertips are fine. Your fingertips do exactly what they need to do. But if you have a yoga strap at home, um, then I highly recommend, or any sort of a, you know, thin, long strip of some sort of cloth, you can lay that under your lower back. And when you do that pelvic tilt, when you engage the core and really flatten the lower back against the floor, you should not, if you pull on the yoga strap, you should not be able to move it out from under you. Okay. And if you can, that means that you don't have your lower back firmly against the floor. So that can be an easier way to check. You know, it can be a little awkward to keep your arms in this position and keep having to, to do the fingertip test. So, if you have a yoga strap or like one of those cloth belts, um, try using that, you know, because it should be thin enough that you can lie on top of it without, uh, without it feeling like an impediment. And that way you just have a, an easier time verifying that yes, my lower back is still on the ground. I don't need to worry. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay. All right. Speaking of, we're back on the slow leg lower. Isn't that awesome? Once we're done with this, we will be halfway through this timer though. That's exciting. Uh, <laughs> oh man. The leaves on this tree are, are thinking about turning. It's almost September. I can't, I mean, I've been doing these classes since March. That's crazy. That is crazy. It's been, 
Almost six months. Almost six months that I've been doing these classes. That is absolutely nuts, my friends. I mean, I'm really glad to have gotten to do this. This is an unequivocal good thing that has happened during the year 2020. But also, it feels really weird to tell how much time has elapsed between March when we were all like, oh, man, we might have to stay inside for the rest of the month to, oh, man, maybe uh, if we're lucky, this pandemic will stop raging across the country by uh, the end of next year. So it's, we have traveled a long way and we are far, far from over. Um, but I really appreciate all of you coming on this journey with me, you know, coming to these classes, working out with me. You know, we're all trying to keep ourselves fit and healthy in extraordinary circumstances. And I'm proud of you for doing these classes, for making that commitment to keep focusing on your overall health in all its forms. And you know, physical health is one component of your overall health, and it can have a huge impact on all of the other components of it. So I am always extremely proud of all of you for being here, for taking part in these classes, for really committing to this work, and I hope that you are enjoying yourselves, and I hope that you like the experience, because I sure do. Oh, man. All right, here are our last two intervals. Knock, knock, knock. Get ourselves ready. Oh, darn, I have to keep sitting on my butt. All right, here we go. <laughs> I, I need to pay attention to what I'm doing is what I need to do. Although my knee is feeling better during today's class than it did during yesterday's class. So that is good, but I do have to keep checking in with it. It's important to make sure that I'm not missing any signals that it's trying to send me. And you know, you know, if you've been to class, that I try to hammer that home all the time. The importance of rest, the importance of listening to the signals that your body is sending you because your body knows when you're about to do something that's really gonna be kind of stupid and all it wants to do is stop you. Oh, it, it just wants you to be safe. That is its goal. And that should be our goal too. So, you know, listening to our bodies before we do something stupid is really good. So with these slow leg lowers, if your lower back does come off the ground, don't worry, just reset, okay? And start going down again and doing it again. And maybe, maybe right now, you can only ever get to about halfway down before lower back comes off and you have to reset. And that's fine because next time you do it, you'll notice that you can get a little bit farther down before your lower back comes off. So I love that exercise because it is both a really good assessment of your core strength and a really good way to strengthen your core. Err. <sighs> All right, friends. I'm feeling better. See, this is what always happens. Even when I come into this class and I'm feeling a little, a little loggy, a little off, you know, as soon as we start moving, I start feeling better. Exercise can be really, really helpful for that. It's not perfect, it's not a silver bullet, but it can be an extremely useful tool for, uh, for turning around bad days in your mental health. So always keep that in mind. Always try to get to your mat. And if you can't, 
I totally understand, all right? There's no judgment for that. There are some days when your brain just will not let you get on that mat, and I absolutely understand, okay? Try for it, and if it's not happening today, that's fine. Don't beat yourself up about it. We all, all have those days, okay? And sometimes, again, sometimes your brain and your body are just trying to tell you what they need. You know, sometimes what you need is that rest day. Mm. All right. So for our next trick, we're gonna still have two exercises. However, for one of them, you're going to have to do a different side each time, okay? So one of them is gonna be a side plank from the elbow, a held side plank. So coming up on our elbow, we want our shoulder to be directly over the elbow. Since we're not on our wrist, now our shoulder's going directly over the elbow, still creating that nice, firm, you know, I basically have a triangle from shoulder to elbow to hand back to shoulder and that is a nice stable structure and we're just going to have our feet stacked on top of each other and we're going to come into this side plank lifting those hips away from the ground you can have your other arm pointing straight up towards the ceiling and we're just going to hold this okay and so each time that we come back to the side planks you need to make sure that you're going to the other side, okay? So that you're not just doing one side the whole time, all right? And then our second exercise is going to be lunge to the hand or elbow. So we're gonna take a nice deep lunge, straight leg behind us, hips pointing forward, this knee not pushing in front of the toes, and you're gonna do one of three things. Either bring that hand down to the floor and just stay there, or bring that hand down to the floor and use that to help guide your elbow all the way down. Or if you have the flexibility, bypass the hand completely, go straight down to the elbow. And then push up to standing, down on the other side, and repeat and just go back and forth. All right, so those are our two exercises and we need to make sure that we are, um, that we are switching the arm that we're using for those side planks each time, okay? So please don't forget that, otherwise you're gonna have one Popeye arm and mm. one arm that's just sort of like, help me, and that's not ideal. All right. Ah, oh, resting. Okay, knock, knock, knock. So, how's that shoulder? Over the elbow. All right, we've got the hips off the floor. Other arm is going up towards the ceiling. And we wanna really just stay in this position. It is a side plank. My glutes are working hard. I do not want my hip to start sinking back down to, towards the floor. I can't even do it without just coming out of the position completely, okay? So you wanna make sure that you are able to maintain this line for the entire 45 seconds and don't come out of it until you hear the timer go at the end. So I've got those glutes engaged. I've got basically all of the musculature in my legs engaged as well. And it helps me to keep in that nice straight position. But uh, yeah, it's intense, it's intense. Don't forget to breathe. We'll come back to that in a second. Right now we're gonna go into our uh, lunges to the hand or elbow or both. Make sure, again, hips pointing forward the whole time and really make sure that when you are standing back up that you're not wobbling around a ton on that standing leg. So you really want to be able to push yourself up safely and not be falling out of the position. And this exercise really 
is much more, it's, it's an active stretch exercise more than anything else, okay? So it is really just giving us a chance to really sink into those hips, stretch them out. We're already warmer because we're coming towards the end of class and uh, we've been moving ourselves around. All right, side plank on the other side. All of those previous notes still apply. So making sure that the elbow is straight over your, or no, the shoulder is straight over your elbow. So you've got this triangle position with your standing arm, for lack of a better term. Make sure that your glutes are really engaged. That hip is not trying to sink back down towards the ground. We've got our other arm pointing up towards the ceiling, really imagining all the energy coming out of those fingertips, helping to keep us in this position. Oh, and now we get to relax. Holy cow. Yeah, that is an intense one. <laughs> it's an intense exercise. I like it. I didn't do that style of plank for a while. I really got focused in on my, uh, on my side to side planks because that's what I was doing for, um, for physical therapy for my shoulder. And, um, and then I was like, you know, I'll try them again. It's been a while and I like them. They're a nice addition, I think, to the arsenal. I don't, I don't really truck with the, um, you know, let's hold this position for five minutes thing because any held position like that, when you're going for that long, we have a tendency to start binding up in other areas of our body. So like you're stiffening your neck and you know, you're stiffening all these other muscle groups. And that's like, does the benefit that you get from holding the plank for that long outweigh the detriments of holding your neck in this really stiff and unnatural position? Eh, I'm not sure. Speaking of hold held positions, make sure that as you are doing your side plank, you are still breathing, all right? This is a thing that happens a lot when we're doing held positions and we think we need to hold our breath at the same time to make sure that we're not throwing anything out of alignment. But you know what? Our muscles are working hard right now, even though they're holding that position and they need you to keep breathing, keep getting that oxygen into your system. All right. So we don't want to be, um, we don't want to be holding our breath because then our muscles are not able to break down the fuel sources that they need to be able to power all of this movement, all of this exercise. So never try and hold your breath when you're doing these held positions. And you know, it will happen without you even thinking about it. So make sure that you are checking in. Make sure that you are paying attention and going, am I breathing right now? I don't appear to be breathing right now. All right, I need to make sure that I re-engage the, uh, the, that apparatus so that I'm actually getting the oxygen that I need to do this exercise. So, oh, here we are, my friends, coming in hot on our final two reps. So last time on your second side, for your side planks, make sure you've been switching back and forth. All right, I know I've said it a lot, but especially when we get really deep in to what we're doing and focusing, we have a lot of stuff that we have to focus on, it's true. And so sometimes we, uh, we lose track of things and we're not necessarily used to having to, uh, having to switch sides 
for an exercise like that. I don't always do that. So uh, it does take a little extra brain power to remind us that yes, we need to even out. We need to even out what we're doing. Oh. Oh, but you're done with your side planks. So nice standing, getting prepped for our final run through these lunges. Oh man, every time you come into this position, see if you can get a little farther in. So if you've just been coming down to the hand, see, try coming down off of the hand to the elbow. It is a much deeper stretch for the hips. You may not be there and that's fine, but always test, you know? At this point, we're really far into class. Our muscles are a lot warmer than they usually are. And so if there was going to be a time that you would be able to, for the first time, really get into that position, now is it. <laughs> but not now because that was the end of that timer. All right, woohoo! Oh, oh, darling, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's why many of us have the band hammer now. Um, I hope the call went well. I yeah, you know everything that I would say. There, that 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 says everything that I would say. But I'm just. It's wonderful to have you in chat. Um, and it is not your responsibility to catch every fucking troll because, you know, that would be exhausting and I would want to pay you for your services. All right. We're going to take five more minutes, my friends. Five more minutes to do one more thing. Um, and that's going to be toe squats. So I don't quite have enough time to do what I had intended to do with them. So what we are gonna do, so we're gonna set that five minute timer going. I, my challenge to you is to keep moving the whole time. Try and make this a perpetual motion timer, all right? Just like our AMRAPs and see if you can keep doing those toe squats for the entire five minutes. Try to keep a count too of how many you do uh, because that can help you get a better sense for when we do the 10 minute timers say or when we do, uh, you know, pick a number between 150 and 300 and do that number of toe squats. This can help you get a better sense of what those numbers would be. So remembering for toe squats, feet in a hip width position, showing you from the side, keeping our backs nice and straight up and down and squatting all the way down to the floor, letting our heels come off the ground so that we are just balancing on our the balls of our feet when we come down here and then standing back up letting our heels come back down naturally okay don't let gravity take control just just moving slowly but surely and trying to keep moving the entire time all right so as soon as you hear the timer horn we are moving okay so this is not a tabata as soon as you hear that horn, it is time to start your toe squats. I'm going to be sparing with these today, obviously trying to be nice to my knee, so I'm not going to go crazy on them, but that's not an excuse for you to not go crazy on them. No, <laughs> just kidding. But, so when we talk about gravity, not getting the better of us, with a position like this, it can be really easy to be like, well, I'm moving in the direction that gravity is trying to move me anyway. So I'm just going to, you know, sort of drop down like that. You see that little bounce in the knees? Unhealthy, bad for your knees. Your knees do not like that. They want you to keep control of this motion. No matter how fast you're going, still being in control. You see, I can move really fast in the exercise, but I'm not doing that little bounce at the bottom. I am still keeping control of every part of the movement. So part of that comes from just making sure that I have 
all of my stabilizing muscle groups engaged. So we start with the core. We want the core to be engaged because that helps us to maintain control over the weight of our torso. So with something like this, where I'm going to be balancing on a very small surface area, just on the balls of my feet, that's not a lot of surface area to be trying to manage all of the weight of my body. And my body's in a little bit of an unusual position. So I have weight for my legs going forward. I have weight for my torso coming up. You know, it's not all in one straight line. I'm basically creating sort of an L shape. And if I'm not maintaining control over my torso, then my torso has the ability to move around, which then throws us off. It throws off our control over our balance. It throws off uh, the our feet's ability to maintain that balance. And best case scenario, you fall out of the position. Worst case scenario, you fall out of the position and hurt yourself. Um, so starting with making sure that your core is engaged, making sure that you have control over the torso. That was our halfway horn. So don't change what you're doing, but just know that we're halfway through. So my core is engaged. So it basically feels like my torso is just kind of floating on top of my hips because my core is taking all of that weight, managing all of that weight. And so I can do that exercise really quickly, honestly, and just move up and down and up and down and not letting gravity take control. And my torso is not going in any unexpected directions where it starts to pull me out of the position. And so then I can, I can do the exercise with more control and more power because I've got my core engaged and I'm not worried about anything in my torso, you know, running off in a weird direction and sending me tumbling after it, okay? So I talk a lot about the importance of the core as a really amazing stabilizing muscle group. And I will stand by that, uh, you know, until I'm no longer teaching class basically, because uh, man, it just, it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. And my core has definitely strengthened a ton over the last five or six months of doing these classes. And, you know, it's the kind of thing where I've always known its importance, but I, the difference that I feel now with my core being so much stronger and more secure is just absolutely incredible. Um, so if it sounds like I'm proselytizing a, a little bit, I am because even, even for me, you know, someone who's been active her entire life, who has been teaching professionally for uh, two and a half years now, I think, um, I'm still getting better. I'm still improving and I'm still learning and relearning the importance of different lessons. And one of them is just really the, the stronger that those stabilizing muscle groups are, the happier we'll be. Oh, good job, my friends. Holy crow. Wow, what a great class. I, I feel a lot better. I feel a lot better. I feel hungry. Um, which is a good thing to feel. <laughs> and and uh, I'm just feeling, feeling a little more centered, feeling a little more present. And, and that's really nice. And hopefully class was able to do that for you as well. Uh, if you were feeling, feeling some type of way coming in. And however, honestly, if it wasn't, if you came out of it and you're like, well, I worked out. Cool. I understand. And that's totally legit. You know, we, uh, as I said, as I will continue to say, this isn't a magic bullet. You know, we, we love to tout the health benefits of exercise. And to be clear, there are a ton, 
Exercise is great. It is as close to a magic bullet as we can possibly get. But when people start pushing it as it's a miracle cure, it will cure everything that ails you. And uh, if you suffer from mental illness, then it's your fault for not going for a walk in the woods. That's when I start to see red because, you know, <laughs> it's not a magic bullet. It doesn't magically cure everything that ails you, everything that's wrong with you. It will help you have an overall healthier life. Absolutely. I will stand by that. But if you are looking for exercise to immediately, you know, fix your mental health, and, and fix your body image issues and, and just make everything absolutely perfect and, and, and magical for the rest of your life. It's never gonna do that, okay? So do not get down on yourself for the days when, sure you worked out, but you come out of it and you're like, oh my God, I still feel fucking awful except now I'm sweaty and uh, tired, <laughs> you know? I've had so many of those days. I have. And, you know, nobody talks about them. They talk about, oh, you know, movement will always, if you're, if you're in a bad, bad headspace, movement will always fix it. It's not true. It will fix it, I think, more often than not. But not 100% of the time. So we're all very good at finding things to beat ourselves up on. And... I, when you are having that happen, I want to be the voice in your head that reminds you that <laughs> we are all here, we're doing the best that we can, and it's really impressive, even when it feels like it's not enough. It is enough, and I am always proud of you, okay? If you got out of bed this morning and managed to do the entire class, I'm proud of you. If you got out of bed this morning and tuned into the chat, I'm proud of you. If you're still in bed, taking care of yourself, watching Twitch on your phone, I'm still proud of you, okay? So if you need that external voice, I want, I want my voice to be that voice, all right? I am proud of you, no matter what you accomplish today. You're awesome and you should be proud of yourself but if that is a struggle today i am proud of you mm. it's important it's important all right my loves my loves this turned into i think a little bit more uh of a really awesome and well-needed therapy moment and i'm glad because let's normalize talking about mental health and thank you for being here on this Saturday morning. I hope that you got a little sweaty. I hope that you got a good workout in. And uh, I hope that you're gonna have a great weekend. Uh, this is the end of my streams for the week. So I will be back next week with my usual schedule. So starting on Tuesday at 5.45 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, all times are in Mountain Time. 5.45 p.m. for Perpetual Motion, the class where we never stop moving. Then Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. for Jump Around, our cardio class. Friday uh, at 6 p.m., Functional Home Fitness, where we do weight training using objects you can find around the house. And then back around to Saturday for the weekend kickoff. So, oh, lots of fun things. Lots of fun things. I have lots of ideas. Oh, man, lots of fun stuff. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Facebook and Insta, Blanche Case fitness twitter at blanche c fitness um you uh, if you've missed a class and want to find the the vod for it all of my vods are uploaded to my youtube channel blanche case fitness uh head over there and subscribe because you know right now it is the repository of all things class stream related and uh over the next few months it will also become a really great resource for uh, videos on our warm-up sequences, videos on stretching sequences, form videos for individual exercises. So I was talking about, I really want to do, uh, 
a form video for for kick throughs because it's such a weird and complex exercise um yes my fonda workout idea oh my god i'm so excited about that <laughs> so yeah subscribe to the youtube channel lots of stuff coming there um if you enjoyed yourself and feel financially stable enough to do so, I always appreciate donations. I do have a coffee account, Ko-Fi account, coffee account, I don't even know. Uh, at Blanche Case Fitness, donations always appreciated, never required. And if you had a good time, if you wanna help me keep growing this community, growing this channel, wanna come take more classes, wanna see me find a Jane Fonda workout video and try to do her workout and see how it goes, um, please do follow this channel. It's been, growing so beautifully over the last six months and it's just so exciting i love doing this i love being here with all of you and i can't wait to do more so thanks for coming with me on this journey today uh have a great rest of your weekend whatever you have planned and i will see you back on the stream on tuesday Mwah. have a great day